The Housing Assistance Council is a national nonprofit that supports affordable housing efforts throughout rural America. Since 1971, HAC has provided below market financing for affordable housing and community development, technical assistance and training, research and information, and policy formulation to enable solutions for rural communities. Welcome to today's webinar. Today we'll be discussing the grant funding opportunity for HACS Affordable Housing for Rural Veterans Initiative, otherwise known as AHRV. Today's an open forum to discuss the current RFP, including a high level overview of the RFP and a walkthrough of the frequently asked questions, along with an opportunity to pose questions directly to the program staff. Thank you to the Home Depot Foundation for sponsoring today's event. It's my pleasure to introduce today's speakers. Anselmo Teyes has over 28 years of experience with HAC, and he has experience working with single family, multifamily, farm labor, and subdivision developments. Anselmo coordinates loan fund information and services and products throughout the Southwest region. He's assisted nonprofit organizations throughout the region to build organizational capacity and project development expertise in HUD, including HAL, and USDA Rural Development Housing Programs. And some will also assist in the coordination of HACS colonias and loan fund initiatives and projects specifically targeting to groups serving colonial residents. And some has received home program certifications regulations. It's also my pleasure to introduce Shantiria Charleston, who oversees HACS Training Charleston. and Technical Assistance Division. Hacks. In her role, Shantiria manages HACS capacity building programs, which include HUD's Rural Capacity Building and Veterans Rehabilitation and Modification Programs, USDA's Rural Community Development Initiative, Community Facilities Technical Assistance, and Rural Placemaking Innovation Challenge Programs, and the Affordable Housing for Rural Veterans Initiative. Terry also provides oversight and management of HACS training activities to include the Biennial National Rural Housing Conference. Prior to this position, Shantiria served as the Programs and Training Manager and provided direct technical assistance on organizational capacity building, nonprofit governance, management, development, strategic planning, and transformation related to an array of programs, including home, single family housing development, and HUD Section 202 811 supported housing programs. Shantiri is a veteran of the United States Armed Forces. Army Active Component, and the Georgia Army National Guard. She holds a master's degree from Central Mich Michigan University, a bachelor's degree from St. Leo University, is a Harvard University Kennedy School of Government and Georgia Military College graduate alumna, is HUD Home Program Regulation certified, and is recognized as a HUD Energy Champion. And now I'd like to hand the mic over to Shantaria Charleston. Hey, thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, can you guys hear me well? Let's see. All right. Um, so I am going to take control of the agenda. So I'll first start by saying good afternoon and happy Wednesday. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you so very much for joining us for today's webinar, the grant funding opportunity um, for HACS Affordable Housing for Rural Veterans Initiative. Um, I am, as Stephanie said, I'm Shantaria Charleston, the Director of Training and Technical Assistance here at the Housing Assistance Council. And um, my co-presenter today, or the presenter today, is Anselmo Tejas. Not joining us today as part of the presentation is we also have our program administrative um, coordinator, Cheryl Cobbler. Um, she's in the webinar today. She's not going to be on screen or speaking, but Cheryl is the person that you will be interacting with most directly if you are um, successful in receiving a grant award um, under this particular round. I wanted to also take a moment to it reiterate Stephanie's uh, thanks to the um, Home Depot Foundation, who has been our long sponsor. Um, I wanted to just acknowledge them for their, their continued partnership on HACS program. Um, without their critical support, um, HAC would not be able to maintain and support the work that we do for rural veterans. And so wanted to just really quickly um, send a special thanks to the Home Depot Foundation. Um, before we get started, want to remind folks, I see this a lot in the um, in the chat box that we have there or the Q&A box. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, and so as you'll see, Stephanie already added a note to say that the webinar um, recording and 
content will be available on HACS website. The PowerPoint presentation is already in the, the, the chat area or the notes area of the webinar. Um, I will go ahead um, and get started. Um, talk a little bit briefly about the agenda today. We will start out with some general program and initiative information. We'll cover the eligible uses. We'll talk about scoring, um, submission and due dates, as well as um, provide some tips for um, successful application completion. And then, of course, we'll also allow time at the end for Q&A. You'll be able to ask Anselmo and I um, direct questions about, you know, the the application the program and such um wanted to there is a really quick poll that stephanie has populated on the screen if you would take an opportunity to um, respond to the poll we would certainly appreciate it um so I want to give you a bit of brief information just a bit of um, information overview on the program um the purpose of the of the affordable housing uh, for rural veterans. We lovingly refer to it as AHRV. Um, and as I said, it is um, generously funded and supported um, by the Home Depot Foundation with the specific purpose of supporting and helping to meet the needs of um, housing veterans of, of veterans and their housing needs in rural areas. I have gotten discombobulated with, with trying to respond to that poll. <laughs> Um, so let me go ahead and advance the slides. I've done that. I'm going to move on really quickly to the, the types of projects, and this is just like the general overview. Um, of course, our projects are intended to support um, brick and mortar projects that Carrie, can either. Yes, Stephanie. I am so sorry to interrupt. I think you need to hit the button to s so that um, the slides aren't advancing. Oh, you know what? That's when I was like, something's going on. I'm not sure why it wasn't sharing. I was trying to get to the poll. So Everyone, technical glitch, my apologies. <laughs> Let me see, where is that, Stephanie? Because I don't see it popping up for me. And take control super quick. Okay. And if you can take control again. Okay. Hopefully that I refresh will be all you need. Um, what about now? Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. All right. Um, that's why we need Stephanie on these calls. <laughs> talk a little bit about um, the the types of activities or the or the projects and I'll go back to that um, it is really um, to support brick and mortar projects um, again these can be either temporary or permanent housing for veterans really depending upon um, the needs of your your local community the typical projects really um, include homeowner modification and or rehabilitation um, new construction of course as well as modification modification and rehabilitation of veteran homeless shelters or transitional facilities. Um, our typical maximum grant award per organization is $30,000. However, depending upon the severity of the need or the criticalness um, of the need, we do have some flexibility in terms of the maximum amounts. And so if the need is, is great or if the project has scarcity of resources, um, please, please submit the fuller request and we will review it as necessary. And sometimes, you know, as I was saying, we do have the ability to increase um, funding awards, but you know, we will need to see the fullness of the extent if you're planning to apply for more than the average um, $30,000. There is no minimum amount an organization can request. And so if you have a project where you say, hey, we need $10,000, we're going to do a roof or very, you know, um, we need to redo, you know, the floors, Please, those, those are all acceptable um, submissions. Um, an organization may only submit one request. So if you have, you know, two units, submit them all as part of request, even if they're not in the same area, because we are only able to um, accept one request per organization. Um, and I say that to say that your, your sites or the homeowners, the, the units can be in different areas. They can be in different counties, so long as, you know, the organization is, is doing the, the work. Um, the, that's the basic overview. I really want to, um, again, thank everyone for joining us. I'm going to turn it over now to Anselmo. He's going to really get down into the technical pieces of it. And so you'll be hearing... Uh, way more from Anselmo and then I'll jump in and out as needed. Um, but Anselmo, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. 
Thank you, Terry. Let me see if I can go on next slide. It's not it. Yep, there it yeah, is. Yep, I have control. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, thanks everyone for attending today. I'm really excited to see many of you. Uh, this is your first time applying for AHRV. And I see that we have so, some uh, veteran groups who um, have some familiarity with the program. But um, I wanted to talk about some of the things that we can do under the AHRV program. And so basically we're looking at development, whether that be uh, new construction uh, and or rehabilitation. Um, a lot of our uh, applicants are uh, focused on rehabilitation. Uh, we, we are focused on assisting um, low income veterans and more specifically rural uh, low income veterans. So this is restricted to to rural communities. And and the main purpose of of the program is to cover the hard cost construction um, of of the activity. Uh, and then we'll also talk a little bit about um, those uh, those activities that that are ineligible or are not um, uh, eligible purposes. So 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 the, the program is intended to be flexible and 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 isn't intended to give you uh, the ability to uh, uh, use the funds in, in a variety of ways um, and specifically responding to to your community needs, um, local local issues, um, hurricanes, uh, all those uh, kinds of issues, you know, where you need to repair roofs, windows. So it gives you that that kind of flexibility and you design your own project. Um, in terms of the range of things that you can do with the AHRV grant funds, um, they include, as Terry said, home ownership, repair, home ownership, multifamily, uh, rental development, preservation and and housing uh, homeless veterans. But but we we like to say that that the AHRV funds are mainly used to address uh, critical critical repair needs, health and safety issues, uh, those things that are warm and dry, uh, and then accessibility issues. So so we can use them in a, in a wide range. It's you can use funds to, for instance, replace windows, repair roofs, replace roofs, uh, address uh, structural deficiencies, um, um, install a of uh, uh, HVAC units, uh, heating and cooling, septic, um, all all those things that 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 contribute to a safe environment, warm and dry, and address ADA uh, accessibility. Um, we can also use funds to offset construction costs um, in 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 larger projects that require larger funding. Um, but in 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 that case, we'll discuss a little bit later. We do have a restriction of 12 months for the project completion, and the grant duration period is 12 months. So you will have to focus and be sure that you're going to be able to complete your project, whatever that is, uh, within that within that 12 month period. Uh, and again, the 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 12 month period is 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 the term of the grant. It's also the the term of, of of project must be completed within 12 months, and 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 I just want to let you all know that this is one of the things that we look at in scoring. Um, and the question is, will the project be complete within the 12 month period? So please demonstrate to us how you're going to complete that project uh, within that 12 months. Uh, one of the things that 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 you will be uh, looking at is because we're talking about serving low income veterans. And so usually uh, as defined by by Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, so but we also look at uh, most folks will look at 80 percent of median income maybe as one and that would be uh, as defined in 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 CFR uh, the 5.609 or we can look at what the IRS, the, the IRS 1040, which is just looking at the adjusted income. And and when serving veterans and especially when serving disabled veterans, uh, some of that income is excluded. 
so that you may look at 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 looking at one and 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 saying well but that's income from all sources and so maybe maybe the disability income is included there whereas if you use the adjusted gross uh, 1040 maybe that's already excluded so but whichever one you use please use that for determining eligibility on 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 all the veterans that you propose to to assist right it, it's it's gonna the program mandates that whatever method you choose you must use it across all assisted veterans you know it's not just a request from us but it's sort of the program's um guidance that you have right, one uniformed yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, dear. Um, and then so so this is we're looking at hard what we call hard costs and soft costs. So hard costs um, are the actual materials and and contracts and subcontracts. Um, and and we have we have a term called acting in the capacity of a contractor um, where you can cover your overhead as as part of administering the program. Um, soft costs would be something like covering write ups, inspections, permits, um, maybe some equipment rental. Let's say you have to dig a trench, you're doing a septic system and you need you need a backhoe. So so you can you can use it. Those, those are soft costs uh, for for renting equipment. Uh, where you need where you need a specific or specialized tool on the job. So uh, and, and and we're going to be repeating some of this over and over. Uh, and and so uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, eligible purposes and ineligible. Um, so so for the most part, um, we're looking at the hard cost construction and the actual development. And so the project management and administrative um, um, expenses uh, are not eligible purposes uh, unless you are acting in the capacity of a general contractor in the capacity of a contractor. In that case, you may have your own crew, and if you were to subcontract it, they, the 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 sub the contractor is going to charge you for materials and labor. So in this particular case, if you have the organizational capacity to act in the capacity of a general contractor, then you can cover overhead, and but not necessarily administrative. But but it is overhead. Um, some of the things that that I wanted to point out here in terms of ineligible uh, activities were well, one of course administrative costs. Uh, we will be looking for any uh, for applicants who who apply to be sure that you have the financial capacity to to administer the program. Um, we we are focused on the actual residents. Um, external structures are not are not eligible. They're not an eligible purpose. Um, garages, storage facilities, um, and I say this only because we've actually seen it. Some folks have, when we look at the final report, is that what did you do? What did you do? Oh, you painted the storage shed to match? No, that's not an eligible purpose. Um, some folks have uh, the way they they have their existing programs. Many organizations already have existing rehab programs um, and some um, have maybe um, loan programs. Uh, and so and so if 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 you're if you're trying to incorporate AHRV funds into into a loan program for for let's say for home ownership, that's not really a good fit for these funds because there must be no repayment at the end of the day when all when all the project is complete. We 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 want to be sure if there is like a loan involved that there's no repayment um, of the AHRV funds. If you bring other sources, that's another thing. But we will also be looking at is the is is the unit after construction affordable to to the veteran, and we want to be sure there's no issues or cost burdens um, at the end of the day. I also wanted to to say that there, and I'm getting real specific here, but sometimes we've seen folks um, include cabinets, uh, replacing the cabinets, and cabinets alone are not a purpose, but cabinets, for instance, uh, for adaptation, ADA uh, modification, 
or in the course of the actual construction, something had you had to tear down the cabinets to get to the wall to do the plumbing and you had to replace the cabinets, then in that case, it would be an eligible purpose. Also, we see uh, accessibility ramps and that's fine, but sometimes folks have gone out and extended the deck. That's not necessarily unless unless it's it's to accommodate accessibility. Uh, decks by themselves would probably not well are not in eligible purposes, but but incorporating them for accessibility. Excuse me, accessibility and ramps. That's that's fine too. And I also wanted to stress that the program uh, is to assist um, veteran occupied units, uh, veteran owned units. Um, some programs, existing programs or organizations also assist the surviving spouses of veterans. And so sometimes we have found that there's been a miscommunication or misunderstanding, but for the purposes of the AHRV fund is just to assist the veteran and surviving spouse of veterans are not an eligible purpose. So, um, so I needed to talk about ineligible as much as I do eligible because we don't want you to submit something that we can't approve. And Samo, can I just really quickly um, give the give everyone the definition of what hack you, the the definition that hack uses um, for veterans? And so hack defines a veteran as a person who served in the active military, naval, or air service who was discharged and then released under conditions other than dishonorable. And that's as provided by the Department of Veteran Affairs. There's also further authority that that HACC uses in its definition is where a reservist or a member of a National Guard who was called to federal active duty or disabled from a disease or injury incurred or aggravated in the line of duty or while in active training status, those folks would also qualify as veterans. And so we can actually include that general definition um, in the notes here. I'll, I'll, I'll paste that definition in the notes. Thank you so much, Terry. Yes, that's really important. Um, OK, so what are, what are we going to be looking at if you submit an application? So um, they're going to be based on these general um, kind of criteria, and that is organizational capacity. And we'll talk about what we look at in demonstrating organizational capacity, uh, what you propose to use the funds for, uh, and how you propose to use them. Um, and this is a really important um, uh, a point, and that is demonstrating the need for funds. And we realize that 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 organizations with with significant funding sources. Um, maybe have other opportunities to fund these activities and that smaller organizations, maybe without a larger operating budget, that that the funds are 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 more significant to them. Also, um, also what the purpose is uh, and what the funds will be used for. That's also another aspect of need for the funds. And then, of course, the project outcomes. And in this particular case, we're really um, looking at impact, right? How how impactful are are the AHRV funds? Um, it, is that is it as impactful to serve one one veteran with with great need, or three veterans um, who just need maybe um, uh, a roof repair or something like that? So so all the projects are different, but and so we look at that as part of evaluating. Uh, the impact and the outcomes. So in terms of organizational capacity, um, we we are going to be looking at your financial position, um, your funding sources, um, and your internal policies and procedures. And of course, we're going to be looking at experience. Um, how many units have you done? Uh, uh, or, or have you worked with veteran? Have you produced veteran units before? Uh, if you haven't, do you have related experience in developing other other development, uh, home ownership, rehab programs, those kinds of things? We're also looking at um, your governance, 
your overall, your, your board of directors, the diversity of your organization, uh, and the skills and experiences that your staff and board bring to the organization. So also, are your project goals realistic uh, based on the, on your capacity, right? Are, so based on your staff experience, um, is your project realistic? And 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 we can be assured that it's going to be completed within the the time frame of the twelve month constraint. Um, do you have adequate staffing? Um, if um, if you uh, if this is your first time and you haven't uh, really worked with veterans, do you have strategic partnerships? Do you work with other veteran organizations um, that that you can partner with who who can help you to um, to identify uh, veterans who need who need assistance, who need rehab uh, or home ownership or other types of, of housing uh, uh, needs. And then we're going to be looking at your your organization in terms of your mission. Does your mission include housing um, and 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 your experience addressing the needs of of rural veterans? So then your proposed use and whoa, it's flickering. Let me go back and come back. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I'm seeing here? that as well, Anselmo. Yeah, let me Stephanie, go. Stephanie or Dan? It's going back and forth between two slides, Anselmo. Is there something maybe sitting on your keyboard? Oh. Uh, um, I'll here. stop the presentation and restart it. You can keep on talking in the meantime. That's OK. Oh, yeah, no, that no, that'll work. Uh, so produce funds and the needs. So the need for funds is is, as I said, was was also um, very, very. We need a very clear um, what your project will, will fund um, and and we will look at your project description, right? And your project description is going to tell us a lot, and it's in the application, uh, and we, we will refer through to it uh, many times as we uh, go through the evaluation process. In other words, what did, you know, what does the organization propose to do? Is it clearly identified? Uh, you're going to serve um, five veterans, you know, with rehab, uh, roofs and ADA modifications, uh, and that that's clear, and that also that your budget reflects uh, what you said in your description. Sometimes we'll look at applications and we we will read the project description, and then we'll go to the project budget, and the project budget just th doesn't seem to to coordinate with what you said you were going to do. Uh, and so so be sure that your your project budget. And your and the, your proposed project match up. One of the things that I want to say is that when you're developing these these proposals, I understand sometimes various people may may be working on the on your proposal, and so you want to be sure that that when authorized person signs the application, that the person working on it and sometimes organization use uh, grant writers, that what the grant writer put together. And and what and what is supposed to be in the application in terms of of attachments exhibits um, that they are actually included because we have had situations where they have been checked off as part of the application but when we go to look the the exhibit isn't there and so just simply just um, coordinating. Uh, with the various persons on your application to be sure that all the component parts are in your application. And so, um, do I need to take control again? Let yes, me. please. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. Thank you so much, Stephanie. All right. Mm 
And Selma, we are not seeing your slides advance. We're still on slide. One. I know, I know. It just it wants me to stop presenting. I don't know why. The stop presenting will always be there. Um, can you make sure that the sync slides is? I'll just advance the slides for you. Yeah, because I don't have the I don't have the control buttons, Stephanie. I just took it away. You're on slide 19, okay. I believe. I was. When we try there taking control again. Let's just oops, let's just stick where we're at. Oh, never mind. Oh, I'm back. I think. I am back. So thank you everybody for your patience. Uh, we can't anticipate glitches. So again, um, let's see, was I on yeah, 19. It's actually okay, blinking really? again um, though, and Selma and Stephanie. So maybe perhaps Stephanie just Isn't take it? control and advance the slides and have it maintain that way throughout. It's doing the same thing. There you go. Okay, it wasn't on my end, good. Okay, so next slide. Right, so again, as I said, be sure you are clear on your description of your project. Um, when when we go to review uh, and underwrite these, these proposals, um, this program is very, very, very competitive. Um, and so and so it's important to, to for you to tell us exactly what you propose to do uh, with the funds. What, what we have sometimes is that we have organizations that they know exactly what they want to do. They already have four veterans identified. They want to do rehab and it's very specific and clear. Other folks say we don't we don't know. Um, we we have a waiting list or we're working with another organization and there's a need for 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 roofs to assist veterans in this particular community or we can also do this with our funds. In that case, we're looking at a project that is really undefined and 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 hasn't there, there's no clear project because it's well, we're going to do either or versus a project that is very clear about what they're going to do with their with uh, with the AHRV funds. We will consider a project that hasn't def, uh, identified all of all of the participants but maybe have a waiting list, but we definitely need to know that you're going to work in a rural community. So the rural certification, and I'll cover that in a little bit, is going to be very important. You'll, we're, we're going to require you to submit a rural certification for each of the, of the veterans that you've identified so that we can determine it's in a rural community, a rural area, eligible rural area. But if you haven't identified uh, the veteran specifically, at least let us know maybe you're going to be working off of a waiting list. You're going to be working with another organization to identify the veterans and you're going to be working in a specific location and submit a certificate, uh, a rural eligibility certificate for that particular community or that particular county or area. OK, uh, in your application, we're also going to ask you about what particular counties you're serving. Please be sure to complete that. That is that is part of the that is actually part of the initial review. OK, next slide, Stephanie, please. Let's see if I didn't already cover it. OK, again, like I say, this is for strictly brick and mortar uh, and and to address critical home repairs. Um, we also have. Uh, uh, we also have had uh, applications to assist for providing uh, transitional housing um, and and um, we've even considered tiny homes as as part of that uh, addressing the the needs for homeless um, and and the AHRV funds were used as part of the construction costs in in conjunction with other other funding and other supportive services um, we can also use it uh, in rental housing but but if you're going to use it with a rental property, we're going to need a, a verification of uh, or or an assurance of occupancy 
that those units will serve uh, a veteran, specifically a veteran. Um, and if and if and if you're submitting a budget and you and you gave us all the information on the rental, but you didn't give us the assurance of occupancy, it, it, it will not have met threshold. All right. So next slide. As I said before, your project budget is so important. Please, please, please use the budget that's in the application. We've had we've had situations where folks will tell us um, see attached application and not even fill it out. They won't have not filled out the budget. Please fill out the budget that we have provided. If you want to submit a supplemental budget uh, as an exhibit to expand on that, then that will be great. But we need to have that initial budget completed. The budget needs to relate to your proposed project uh, and fill out all of the all of the items that are applicable. Um, development item one, X amount of dollars, other funding, X amount of dollars, and then please total it out. You'd be surprised how many applications don't meet threshold because there's no total on the budget. There's 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 numbers in there but they don't add up and and anyway i mentioned it because we are surprised when that happens uh, so your project budget uh is um an important part of your proposal please use our budget and and um and, and this is part of our threshold review next slide please Oh, I've already talked about the project narrative. Be sure that it's clear. Um, we get project narratives that are quite lengthy. And we very much appreciate that. We very much appreciate getting more information. But but as we're going through, we need to know up front. What is it that you're proposing to do? Sometimes we will get to the very bottom and still not be clear about what the organization is proposing to do so so please be clear about how you're going to use the funds the number of units you're going to assist um, if you have information on statistics or the need of specific veterans that is great too all right next slide next slide so so one of the things that we will do in terms of scoring is we're going to be looking at what your projected outcomes are. So if you say we're going to assist um, four veterans uh, with rehab, well then, but it's more than that. It may be more than that because then you're improving their lives, uh, or and you're going to be or or say and we're going to bring additional dollars in. We're going to use it in combination with other funding that we have or that we want to secure. And so in combination with AHRV funds, we're going to bring in other funds and we're going to be able to produce this outcome and impact. All right, so so that's one of the things that we will be looking at uh, in terms of evaluating uh, your proposal. Next slide, please. Next slide. So. We in your application it's a it's a word version so please feel free submit the word version if you like um, you can also like pdf print uh, and and convert it to a pdf uh, but then but then all the attachments and the application should be should be sent to us uh, in one submittal all right now some of these applications can get quite lengthy and we recognize them sometimes we 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 get uh, emails that say we, we could not submit all the information because we didn't have enough. Our email wouldn't allow us to submit such a large document. In that particular case, just go ahead and submit multiple documents, but in the but in the title of the email, just say, you know, submitted application uh, one of three, the next app, the next email two of three, and then the next email three of three. That way we know that there are three component parts and that we will be able to put them all in one file uh, but it, but in essence, it will still be one submittal. But but help us to identify that that you needed to do uh, submit the application in more than one than one email. OK, next slide, please. OK. One of the very first things that we look at 
in terms, we'll go through a threshold review process, which means we're going to be looking at all the organ the applications that came in that were complete, that had the basic documentation, and those are the applications that we're going to move to the next level of underwriting and scoring. Uh, applications that do not meet threshold requirement will be considered incomplete and 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 we will not be able to pr process or proceed with that application and it'll, and and that'll that'll will let you know that that uh, it did not meet threshold requirement but the one of the very first things is you know was the application complete you know were the fields complete you know was the counties identified and was it signed <laughs> okay well, very first things Believe it or not, we've had to reject or uh, applications at this very first step. Sorry. Anyway, incomplete applications uh, will not meet threshold requirement. Next slide, please. So, so we've had we've had so many applications come in at once. Sometimes, or some folks will submit it ahead of time, and. And so, but if you forget something um, and you say, oh, I forgot something and, and then you're going to submit that to us, uh, that really complicates things and it's hard for us to track. So if you forgot something, uh, that's okay. If, it, if it's before the deadline, no problem. Resubmit your application, let us know it's a resubmittal, but you'll have to submit the whole application. All right. Um, also, we no one can anticipate technical glitches or issues with an application uh, and we've had folks that at the last minute have those kinds of issues so so to try to not have to deal with that if you feel like you can submit it the day before the deadline uh, and address the issues that's fine because it's going to be really hard um, to and 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 if it doesn't make it by the deadline of January 23rd at four o'clock Eastern, uh, we'll not be able to accept it. Uh, if you were having problems getting it to us, um, that's it's a competitive process. So we're not going to be able to accept um, applications, you know, after the deadline. Also, please submit your applications to um, AHRV at ruralhome.org. Um, and I'll explain this a little bit later. Don't send it to Ansamo. Don't send it to Cheryl. Don't send it to Shantaria. OK, please send it to AHRV at ruralhome.org because that's where we're going to track everything. Next slide, please. OK, next slide. So, OK, I've already talked about the incomplete application. Uh, that's it. It won't meet threshold review and we won't be able to uh, continue processing it. Next slide. As I said, the application is is uh, available in Microsoft. Uh, the handwritten applications uh, will not be accepted. Um, and and so most of our applications come in and they're just scanned in PDF or print PDF. And then also there the, a lot of the attachments are just um, combined with that. So we get a large merge document. Next slide. Thank you. Um, I, I we put it up here and 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 because we just please complete every section. You'll be surprised. Sometimes we get sections that are just left blank. Um, it's OK if it doesn't apply or Maybe you can just put an NA in there, uh, but please complete all the sections that apply. Um, and and please, as I said before, uh, include all appropriate exhibits at the end. Uh, at the end of the application, there's those little check boxes. Uh, again, be sure to coordinate with all that are involved with the application. Sometimes those boxes are checked, but the actual exhibit is not included with the submittal. And and then be sure that the application is signed. We've even had that issue where applications were not signed. So next slide. Next, yeah. Yeah, let's just populate them all. Okay, 
there you go. So, um, organizations, uh, 501c3s, 501c4s, those are our main applicants. Uh, tribal uh, organizations, um, please submit your your um, your IRS uh, 501c3 certification. Um, this is a threshold requirement. A certificate of good standing. Please include a certificate of good standing from your uh, Secretary of State office. Um, this this is uh, also a threshold requirement. Um, a current um, fiscal year operating budget year to date actuals at least through July uh, 30th of 2021. And I'm going to emphasize this again is a threshold requirement. And then your most recent audit. Um, your 990. Um, if if your organization is not a 501c3 or a 501c4, if your organization is a housing authority, for instance, or some kind of um, um, how would I um, cog or some other uh, type of agency that maybe doesn't file a 990, um, then then we'll be looking. You know, do you have an do you have a finance do you have an audit report? Do you have financials, um, and 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 if you can't submit your uh, a 501c3 or 501c4, you're a different organization. Please submit a charter or something so that we know the type of organization that you are. All right, um, and then a list of the board members, uh, their affiliation, the diversity composition. Um, this is all part of the organizational capacity, and we it's part of the one some of the first things that we look at in terms of is the organization broad based you know what kind of representation does it does the organization have you know what kinds of of uh, of experiences do they bring to the organization because staff is one thing governance is another but it is all part of organizational capacity so and then of course the proposed program um, project budget as i emphasized before is very very important that that be complete on our form uh, and that it coincide with your your proposed project. Next. Next slide. I already talked about oh back up. Yeah, I already talked about if in fact you're doing multifamily, uh, we need an assurance uh, of occupancy. One of the things too, um, if you're proposing to use AHRV funds and the maximum amount of of assistance is around Thirty thousand dollars, and you're proposing a five hundred thousand to million dollar project. It's probably not AHRV is probably not a source of funds you want to be looking at because what are the chances that you're going to be able to complete your multifamily project in twelve months? And that's what we're going to be looking at. Can you complete the project in twelve months? However, I will do a however. We have funded, uh, for instance, transitional housing, where we know it's going to take longer than the twelve months, but the AHRV funds are used for a very, very specific task. They're used to, to complete a very specific development item. Like like we've we funded for the sprinkler system or we have funded for the foundation work. And so in that case, that's part of the process. That aspect of development can be completed in 12 months. But in that particular case, we're definitely going to be looking at your overall sources and uses and 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 we need some assurances that that project's going to go forward um, and that all your sources of funding are going to be um, will will come into play. So so we will consider it on a case by case basis and and but you need to give us the information to say to demonstrate this is the part that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, and and our project will be complete, you know, 12 months after that. So. Um, and again, if you forgot something and it's past the deadline, sorry, we're not going to reach out to you and and we're not going to be able to to accept it. OK, next slide. 
OK, as part of your application, um, we ask questions about about the area that you're in and do you serve a high need population? Um, we use that information in in as we gather information and 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 try to figure out where uh, AHRV funds are going uh, and the types of of high needs areas that are being addressed. So so please, if 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 you are serving high needs areas uh, and let us know the the area that you're in. Sometimes we sometimes this is not complete. It doesn't necessarily affect your application, but it's it's information that we we would like to have and we request that you please. And that's part of the complete application, right? When we look at is the application complete, we're going to be looking at this. Next slide, please. Again, underserved populations. This is our definition and you're going to be able to uh, we're going to be posting the the, the presentation uh, and you're going to be able to download it. So so if there's any question, please refer to this this section in terms of what we look at in terms of who, who we considered underserved populations. Uh, and then we're also there's a question about the Home Depot um, connection. Uh, are you are 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 you a grantee of the Home Depot now? And if and if and if if you answer yes, please let us know in in what way, shape, form, capacity, program um, that that you um, that you are involved with the Home Depot Foundation. So next slide, please. OK, all right, back up, back up. OK, right, stop there. What I wanted to do here was um, before we get to the questions is I, I wanted to to go over some some of the emphasis uh, items that we're looking at and just kind of review a few things uh, and it may and rather than the FAQs frequently asked questions to kind of put things in perspective and maybe will help if nothing else maybe to generate questions or but I just wanted to cover and re-emphasize that we're looking at critical repairs, removal of health and safety hazards, safety issues, uh, ADA accessibility. Um, the AHRV is a reimbursable grant. AHRV grant funds are it's a reimbursable grant. What what we do though, what we do though is if you are selected, we advance 80% of that. 80% of your uh, what was uh, if if you receive an award, we'll we'll advance 80%. So let's just say that taking a $30,000 example you're approved for a $30,000 grant. We will upfront 80% of that. Well, what is that? $24,000. And that leaves $6,000. Uh, and and when we look at your application, we're going to in terms of the financial uh, your financials, we want to be sure that you have the resources to put up the $6,000 to complete the 30,000 and that you have administrative funds to administer the project. Once the project is complete and you submit your final report, give us all your receipts. Um, then we will total total things up and and then it, and then we will uh, advance a final payment of six thousand dollars. So just want to be sure that the folks know that it's a reimbursable grant and that's how we would do it. Um, so. Um, OK, Terry already talked about we have flexibility to to look at the proposal uh, and determine um, if maybe we might approve a lesser amount or 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 adjust the budget. Um, emphasizing I already emphasized what we what we would use the the the, the funds for modifications, uh, stress owner occupied and surviving spouse are not eligible. Um, Weather tight issues, health and safety, septics, weatherization, roofs, ramps uh, to the main residence, no external structures, uh, garages, etc. If there's any questions and, and it's before the deadline, we welcome any questions that you, you, you can call us and we will absolutely um, uh, provide guidance uh, and we will ask you questions. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, that'll be good. Better to be sure about about about. The type of project that you're submitting 
rather than for us to say, oh, they should have called us. OK, so so I wanted to talk about designating your your project and I talked about the some organizations uh, have the units identified and then there are those that not don't necessarily have an identified project. We just wanted to let you know that for those organizations that have an identified project, um, they will have an advantage in terms of the scoring versus a project that that doesn't have a pro uh, a, 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 a designated project um, identified. Um, if you if you have if you have if if you're not sure, but you have a an or you're working with an organization, they have a waiting list. There's a need. That's OK. That's OK. That's that's as good as an identified project. But but if your project is is we're going to do this or we're going to do that, that's not specific and please avoid that. Um, the timeline again must be completed in 12 months. Um, we're going to be looking. Please submit your rural certifications for all those veterans that you're going to assist. If you're not sure, at least submit one rural certification um, that 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 is specific to the work, the area, the service area that you're going to be working in. And again, that is going to be a threshold, a threshold requirement. Um, if you're using AHRV funds for home ownership, again, I want to remind you that that we are going to be looking at what is the the final payment, what's the affordability, is there a cost burden, what were the rates and terms, and and how is that home ownership project going to going to compete against a rehab project where you're going to use, for instance, thirty thousand to assist three families, four families, versus. 30,000 to to underwrite or or reduce the cost of one home ownership and what's that going to convert to in terms of the actual payment at the end of the month at the end of the day um and so and so we will consider home owner home ownership uh, uh situations but that's that's uh probably not as competitive all right um we will fund transitional housing and and like I said before, we we um, for instance, if you if you if you're proposing to do transitional housing, ho address homeless needs, uh, and 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 that one unit is probably going to be will will maybe serve many veterans, and so please let us know. You know, we're, it's just one unit, but. But in one year, we're going to we're going to transition four or five veterans through there and we're going to provide supportive services, that kind of thing. Um, I wanted to and I'm almost done here. Uh, we we'll get to the questions. AHRV does not require a match. OK, so you so so you can just take whatever you're submitting up to the you know, average 30,000 and and you can put a project and develop a project. Many organizations do have additional funds that they let us know they're going to be using in conjunction with AHRV funds, and 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 that's great too. But we want to just be sure that you know, uh, match is not required, right? You don't. So you can apply. You identify the project, and and we're not going to ask you for any match. Remember, we're looking at repairs to heated space, uh, and then oh, this is probably repetitive because I wanted to re-emphasize it. So and then um, want to say or organizations who um, help to identify veterans, um, maybe do do um, the write ups, uh, handle the inspections uh, and accounting. Uh, that organization um, can can include those types of of soft costs in their proposal, but they're not necessarily admin. And and so admin is out. That's why. But but these are costs that you can kind of put in there if you're not acting in the capacity of a contractor and then. But if you have the capacity and are going to act in the capacity of a contractor, you're going to handle all the contracts, subcontracts. You have a crew that's working on them. Then the overhead is an eligible purpose. And I just want to remind you uh, of that. So. 
Uh, and finally, finally, I want to uh, clarify the fact that that our RFP um, is seeking applicants proposals uh, so that we can include in our proposal to the Home Depot Foundation. So just to be clear, we don't already have the money. We don't have the money. It's going to be included in our proposal. So, so this is this is one of those those areas where sometimes it can be difficult because we're asking you to maybe identify a project and identify veterans. Yet we're we're here uh, in January, and you probably won't know until April whether you got funded. So. It's just the reality of of the process. So I just wanted to be sure that that was clear and that everyone understood that. So, all right, well then, um, can we open it up? Um, Terry, I see you've been answering some as you went along. Yeah, I have been answering. I jumped in and started answering questions because we are actually at the top of the hour. And so I want it to be respectful of folks' time. And so if there are questions that I've not yet had an opportunity to answer in the chat area, um, you know, if you could, Stephanie, are we able to do the raise hand functions? We'll we'll take another four minutes because again, I want to be respectful of folks' time. Um, but if we are able to use the raise hand functions, if I've not um, responded to your questions, um, Miss Caldwell, I, I, I'm responding to someone Caldwell right now. I, I don't want to. I don't want to mess up your first name. Um, J A I A H. Um, we can absolutely um, contact you to speak with you directly. And so that was one of the the last calls. Can an organization get funded two years in a row? Absolutely, organizations are eligible for funding if they have a current award. However, you have to be up to date um, with your reporting activities and making um, sufficient progress along. Um, that doesn't disqualify you if you are not complete. However, scoring does depend upon it. And so that's one of the scoring factors that are um, part of the application. All right, under reaction, Stephanie is saying she's very um, muted, and so. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I, my my microphone was up. Yes, under reactions, you can raise your hand. Sorry. Okay, Terry. perfect. Thank you. And I John David John. has already found it. Yeah, John <laughs> All right. David has already found it. All, right. <laughs> All right. Hey, John. Thank you so much for your All question. Right, hey, John. Please. Thank you so much for your question. Please. Hey, yes, please. Could you put on the screen the uh, link for the application itself, please? The site. Oh uh, yes. I can I can ha ask Dan or Stephanie to do I that. We will do that Dan now. Do well, we're going to drop it in the in the chat area. Well, is that okay, John? In the chat area. Is that okay, John? It is. Well, it is my, on. My screen doesn't have a chat area. On. I don't have a chat area, so I don't know where the chat area is on this thing. John, I'll actually email it to you. John, no I'll worries. I'll email it directly following no the call. I'll email it directly following the call. That would be super great. Thank you kindly. Of course. Um, let's see. Any other hands that are raised? Any other hands that are raised? Will organizations receive an email if they do not receive uh, uh, funding? Yes, yes. We will be notifying those folks that receive awards as well as those that do not receive awards. The folks that, unfortunately, the folks that do not um, receive an award will likely get notified sooner. As Anselmo said, the, the, the applications that we are funding goes into our award. And so we are not expecting to have notification of our final approval on our award until um, mid to late April. And so, by then, we would have already figured out who met threshold and who did not and who advanced um, into HACS application to the foundation. Let's see, under the scope of home ownership, can funds be used for down payment assistance to individuals? Um, that's a I'll, very I'll, good, go I'll, ahead. I'll I'll, yeah, I'll take that one. Um, I No, no. You cannot use it for down payment assistance because down payment assistance, we're not sure where it's going to go. But you can use it to offset the cost of construction, in which case we can identify what those funds went for. 
they went to offset windows, they went to offset construction, uh, it lowered the cost of the mortgage and made the unit uh, more affordable. In that particular case, again, we would look at what are the other funding sources uh, or what is the mortgage and what, you know, and is the payment affordable? So, but yes, down, it's all, it's, it's, I guess it's, it's semantics and, and, uh, but, but if you call it down payment assistance, uh, it's not an eligible purpose, but if you use it as, as offsetting costs, then, then we will look at it. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. I see Joanna has a question about um, eligible use. Could it be pre-development costs, i.e. architectural and engin engineering plans for a veteran subdivision? Again, again, although it might meet the definition of a soft cost, uh, that's we're probably it, it's probably going to be a no because there is so much involved. We're looking at the 12 month development period. And so the project would would again, I, I, I don't know what I don't know about what the project is, but I would ask the applicants I, to look to look at can that. Can I yeah. jump in, um, yeah. Joanna, if you would reach out to us directly on that, because if you have a complete veterans um, subdivision, um, Hack might be able to assist you with uh, getting in through another um, avenue for for funding to support that project. And so, reach out to us directly, Joanna, if you would, please. Great, that yeah, that's great, Terry. Yeah, that would work. See. Um, trying to see if we missed anybody. If I've if I've not been able to answer your question, if I've overlooked it, please forgive me. But if you would use the raise hand function so that I can call you and maybe um, you can remind me that I did not respond to your question in the chat portion. Yeah, but I want to I want to say this. Please, please reach out to us between now and the deadline. You have questions. Uh, submit them through AHRV at ruralhome.org. Um, if it requires a follow up call, uh, uh, organizing, scheduling a meeting, we'll do it. We'll do it. We want everyone uh, to have uh, an opportunity to participate in this program and 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 better to uh, call us uh, before the deadline uh, and and discuss what it is that you want to do, uh, what it is that you typically do. Um, and then give us a little bit more information. We're happy to do that ahead of once we close out uh, and the deadline comes, you, you're probably going to hear nothing from us for a while because it is a competitive process. We're not going to reach out to anyone for more information. We're just going to be processing what we have. So, but I, I just want to be clear. We welcome, welcome inquiries. Any other questions? Let's see. And I'm going really quickly. Stephanie, don't cut us off. I'm trying to look, look really quick, really <laughs> quick. Um, I don't see any questions that I did not answer. Um, I think I responded to Don. Yeah, I asked Don to contact us directly. Um, so not being able to see any questions there in the chat that I haven't addressed, not seeing any hands raised. Want to thank everyone for their time um, with us today on the call. Please, 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 as Anselmo said, please reach out to us at AHRV at ruralhome.org if you have any questions. Also, please visit HACS website. The presentation from today, as well as the recording, will be available there. Um, any hangups on the on the Word document that's there for you to complete the application, reach out to us via email. We will be responding um, to emails and, you know, setting up calls with folks up until the due date. So thank you again. We really appreciate your time. Please take a moment to complete the survey that you'll receive following the webinar. And we look forward to seeing some great applications come through. And thank you. Thank you for your work and commitment to veterans. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good day. All right. Bye.